Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Quantum Listener. Today, I thought we would commemorate the anniversary of Shostakovich's Lady Macbeth of Minsk District. I think I said that right. Minsk. Minsk. Someone help me here. But it does lead me to one of my favorite pieces of all time, his Fourth Symphony. Shostakovich uh, wrote, within a very short span of time, Lady Macbeth, the Fourth Symphony, and the Fifth Symphony. Lady Macbeth was written and premiered around this time in 1934. It was not received very well by the Stalin government during that time. As a result, Shostakovich ended up having to cancel performances of his Fourth Symphony. He wrote the Fifth Symphony. The symphony became very popular both in Russia and abroad. However, that is not to say that the Fifth Symphony is better than the Fourth. In fact, what I'm going to suggest today is, in fact, the fourth is better than the fifth. A little bit controversial. For those who do not know the fourth symphony, it's his tribute to Mahler. This is reflected both in terms of the themes he uses from, say, the first and second symphonies, also in the massive orchestration. For those who think that the fifth symphony is big and loud, it does not even compare. Much larger brass section, a much larger wind section, tons of percussion. More importantly, the mood of the Fourth Symphony is akin, in a way, to Mahler. Very emotionally wrought. Very sincere. It does not pull punches. Terrifying to the audience, as it must have been to Shostakovich's friends when they first said, you cannot play this piece. Well, the interesting things about the Fourth Symphony is that it was not released until after Stalin's death. So it came after Symphony No. 9. He did have pre-existing parts that he used in recreating the score, since the score was lost during World War II. The themes that he uses are still very much of that early middle period. The orchestration, however, is much later. I'm convinced that a lot of the piece itself is very much in the style of what he was actually writing at the time that he finally did release the Fourth Symphony. Maybe not the themes again, but certainly the harmonies, certainly the orchestrations are of a much later style. What I think is most interesting about the Fourth Symphony is that even though I think it is probably his most sincere piece, and I think it's more sophisticated than the Fifth Symphony, it is not easy for the audience, and it is not easy for the players. If you were to track more directly Shostakovich's style of writing from the early period onward, you wonder how much his music would sound more of Schnitka or other Russian composers after his time, if he were not held back in the way he was stylistically Either way, the Fourth Symphony is brutal, it is absolutely brutal to listen to. There is no happy ending in the Fourth. If I were to use one of my favorite analogies with classical music, which is to compare it to movies, both the Fourth and Fifth are horror movies. Let's say they're Wes Craven horror movies. The Fifth is Scream. Everyone knows the actors. It's a fun watch. The fourth is Last House on the Left. You want to take a shower after you're done listening to it. I remember still the first time I listened to it. I have never heard an orchestra play that loud in my life. It's not just the noise. It's also the harmony. It's his use of texture. It's his use of mood, dynamics. It's an incredible piece of music. But you can definitely see why people would be hesitant about it and why people today, I think, are hesitant about programming it for their orchestras now. However, I do think it is Shostakovich at his most authentic between these two Shostakovich symphonies. We'll talk about 14 at another time. There are a lot of recordings of the fourth available. Highly recommend you listen to it. It's a very long piece, but worth every second. Let me know in the comments what you think, either about this piece or number five. I expect to get some vitriol in the comments. Keep it clean, please. Very good talking to you. I'll see you next week.